The Coming Global Enlightenment The time has come for us to expand our normal human experience, to once again include the sacred and the profound in our everyday lives. Yet instead of finding that in religion, we find it in our rational, factual, and practical world. And this makes all the difference. This requires a fundamental rethinking of our everyday lives, both individually and collectively. The outcome of this changes everything. It helps us to understand why we're here, what's going on in society, and creates real meaning in our lives. This moment in time is unprecedented in all of human history. We finally have enough information and capability to evolve beyond our common reality to a much more real and meaningful one. We've been attempting to do this for several thousand years, and especially in the past 50 years with some success, but have yet to really break through. What's been missing is the right map, a map that is accurate enough and practical for the average person. The map is a direct and thorough understanding of the spectrum of consciousness that is developed in stages and ends with enlightenment. That's a very important sentence and one that I'll elaborate on. We need to become enlightened. This is one of the few words that I've brought over from the older traditions and do so with great care. The word has been used throughout our history from Plato and Socrates through the religions all the way to the European Age of Enlightenment. Now we return to this word because of its potential. As mentioned in the Enlightenment 2.0 episode, the word means into light. And we can use light as an analogy for this. Imagine living your entire life in a dark closet. That's all you know. You've never seen anything because there's no light. Then one day, a light is turned on for a brief second, and you suddenly have vision and can see everything that you've sensed throughout your life. It's transformative. Suddenly, everything becomes clear. Everything that you've touched and sensed is understandable because a whole new world has come into being. For a brief period, it changes your entire life. But the light was only on for a second, and you have no way of turning it back on, because you don't know how it was turned on in the first place. In fact, you didn't even know there was light before then, and you didn't know about your eyes. Although that experience radically changes your perspective and changes your life, eventually that realization goes away and becomes a memory, and one that you begin to doubt as time goes on and eventually becomes a myth to you. Plato used a similar example in his cave allegory, except that he added multiple people and a teacher bringing the light. If we could learn to turn that light on, it would radically transform our world. We can continue along this line of thought by looking at how our conception of light has evolved. For all of human history, until recently, we only knew about a certain kind of light, white light, the kind that shines from the sun or a fire. Then with Isaac Newton, we learned that light is actually made up of colors like a rainbow. With Michael Faraday, we learned that light and colors are just one small section along a much bigger spectrum called the electromagnetic spectrum. Then with Albert Einstein, we learned that it that the electromagnetic spectrum is one force among others, like gravity. We keep learning that what seemed like one thing is actually a compilation of many things on a spectrum. That our understanding of light, for example, was not wrong, it was just too limited, and our ideas simply needed to evolve. It was just far more complex than we realized. Even though we got along relatively fine before then, before each new incarnation of facts, when we learned about the rest of the truth, we incorporated it into our existing paradigm and were much better for it. 
it added to our understanding of what was possible. I used light as an analogy. The analogy refers to consciousness, specifically to the spectrum of consciousness. Our consciousness, that which creates our reality right now, is actually a spectrum rather than one thing. And it's the missing link. It's the key to the map with a compass and a legend and scales. It's the manual for our enlightenment, for the next version of humanity. Our consciousness allows us to do everything that we do. It, it not only allows it, but it dictates our reality. Therefore, the workings of our consciousness are extremely vital to us as individuals and to society. It would be a nightmare if the apparatus that allows for consciousness and creates our reality were a mystery. But that's exactly what's been occurring for thousands of years. In fact, all of human civilization. Take a look at society and at yourself. This is what we get without such a manual. It's wonderful in many ways, but also horrible in many others. Regardless, it's extremely limited and it's time to evolve. We weren't given the official operating manual for being human. And we've come to the end of this stage in human history and we'll either evolve or go extinct. Just like our discovery of the complexity of light, we got along okay, but that was before nuclear bombs, before mass extinction of plants and animal life on land and in the ocean, before overpopulation, mass deforestation, climate change, mass suffering, corruption of public and private institutions, and above all, the loss of real meaning in our lives. We must evolve, but this time evolution must be chosen consciously, individually and collectively. The spectrum of consciousness is the next frontier. Like the analogy of light in the closet, we must build a map based on the scattered fragments of the light. Our specific consciousness is like the focal point of the lens. This main lens is broad at one end and narrow at the other. In actuality, it's a series of spectrums and lenses, though we have not thoroughly mapped this, so it's difficult to get too detailed. Just as light is one part of the broader spectrum, so is consciousness. We can detect the differences in many ways, such as consciousness at the first moment of life, and as we age, and finally at death. Consciousness at different parts of the day, from morning to noon to night. It also changes depending on the people around us, the environment, and as the senses change. One can react in a number of ways along the spectrum. On the one end, hearing the idea that existence is a miracle can sound mundane, or at best an interesting notion. And on the other end, one can become completely enlightened by realizing the depth of that statement. I'm not going to go into detail about the spectrum of consciousness here, but I will talk about the stages an individual goes through and the society will go through, which will usher in the global enlightenment. The stages of consciousness can be thought of like the light in the closet analogy, beginning with the initial glimpse and ending with a functional map. It's just like learning anything from riding a bike to learning engineering, except for two crucial differences. That you are working with the apparatus that creates your reality. And the other is almost no one knows about this. So we're working on the edge of our very existence. The first stage of enlightenment is a sudden jolt out of your current reality, a sudden realization and glimpse into another world. Imagine an ant is going about its normal life and then all of a sudden has an enlightened experience. It realizes what it is and what it's doing. 
Its entire life seemed to be one way, but now is another. At first, it would seem profound that it fully grasps its existence and its context and realizes the profoundness of this realization. But it's not going to have an easy life just because of this realization. Imagine it trying to explain this to the others. Most people have had an experience like this, but they misinterpret it or they don't recognize the significance because they were too young or because society generally doesn't appreciate that. So the first stage is this sudden realization, which most people never fully reconcile. The second stage is consistently seeing the contrast between everyday reality and the broader reality. You know that you've had a transformative experience, but the difficulty is in recreating it. You look to society for help, but find little solace here. And you can't talk about it very well. And everybody who does talk about it has their own language for it. You're unable to maneuver about very well on the map. You're like a child learning to walk. The third stage is mainly defined by growing confidence. You're able to recreate the enlightened experience. You're able to explore it. You've developed a rough map. While you've not mastered the spectrum of consciousness, you can recognize where you are most of the time and eventually make it to any other place on the map, like maneuvering a sailboat. You're confident that you're on the right path, but you're still forgetful. You get lost in the infinite stories. Sometimes they're fun, other times less so. But you're glimpsing into the nature of reality. And that's a truly profound stage where above all, the most significant thing is how real it is. In fact, life is real for the first time where your old reality, that being almost everybody's normal reality is like sleepwalking, like only living on the surface level of the deep ocean. You can identify others who have had the experience, and you can develop a common yet rudimentary language in which to converse. Life at this stage is the most pleasant so far, because you realize that you play a significant role in creating your reality, and are thus proactive. Your life is based on experience and knowledge, and a complex understanding of yourself and society. You're not as prone to surface level troubles and are not so distracted by unimportant activities. Every moment and interaction to some significant degree is important and valuable and even profound. The last stage is enlightenment where you never forget about the nature of reality and are always aware of the spectrum of consciousness and have a very functional map. You can get lost in a story, but you always know your way home. You no longer need a teacher and now view them as friends and colleagues. Your life is transformed into that which dreams are made of. You could become a solitary monk or a Tony Robbins. The only thing that matters is maintaining your grasp on reality, the enlightened state. Life is only about carving a new path for yourself, for society, for humanity. The coming global enlightenment will occur individual by individual and will grow by orders of magnitude. We will have to develop a new language, a new literature and mythology, a new discourse and guide on how to live in the world. We will develop a community based on compassion and understanding and love. The global enlightenment is coming. We are at a pivotal point in all of human history, perhaps the most pivotal of all because of the vast capabilities available to the average person. It's time for us to transcend our past humanity, our ordinary normal society. 
If you enjoyed this episode of Enlightened Society, please subscribe, share, and donate. Thank you.